Good afternoon, and welcome to our Facebook Live event. My name is Johan Schmanzis, and I'm the director of the Africa Regional Media Hub, located in Johannesburg, South Africa. Our hub, which consists of five public diplomacy professionals, is the U.S. Department of State Center in Africa for connecting journalists to U.S. government leaders to discuss a wide variety of topics. As always, we are grateful to our journalist partners for joining us and uh, for the important work that you do. Uh, today, we are discussing Power Africa under the topic, Energizing Africa, Addressing Energy Needs in Sub-Saharan Africa. This discussion will cover topics including the Power Africa model and approach, uh, accomplishments of Power Africa, and Power Africa's energy work on generation, transmission, and distribution. Let's take a quick look at a, a video highlighting some of Power Africa's work on the continent before I introduce our speaker for today. I apologize to uh, those of us who are with us. We're uh, queuing the video right now and should have it up for you in a moment. With every light that turns on, a path is illuminated. When you put some installation like in the darkness, everybody there in the family gets excited. Access to electricity is opportunity. It's the flip of a switch that allows a business to thrive. Relief for a worried mother. The spark that fuels the next big idea. And it's the connection that's needed to plug Africa into the global economy. Power Africa, a US government-led partnership, is creating that connection doubling access to electricity in sub-Saharan Africa, using the rich resources of the African sun, wind, streams, lakes, and natural gas, investing in technologies that expand the grid and reach beyond power lines. Thanks to Power Africa, the rushing waters of a river will light a town. Students can count on solar fields to light their path, and the bubbling gas under an African Great Lake fuels the only floating methane extraction plant in the world. Power Africa brings together the greatest innovators, top companies and countries to spur Africa's energy revolution. With these partnerships, we've mobilized billions of dollars in investment and broken down barriers to speed up power projects. Our work is shining a light on an untapped market and investors are taking notice. Power Africa will generate 30,000 more megawatts of electricity and electrify another 60 million homes and businesses. It's ambitious but achievable. There's nothing more exciting than being present when our customers turn on their lights or their TVs. And by teaching the next generation, Africa will lead its energy future. If more kids become engineers with the necessary tools, they can transform Africa. The future is bright. Join us. All right, very good. So our distinguished speaker today is Power Africa's coordinator, Richard Nelson, uh, he's joining us from Pretoria, South Africa. As Power Africa coordinator, uh, Mr. Nelson oversees the US government's decade-long initiative to double access to electricity in sub-Saharan Africa by 2030. 
With over 200 partners from the private sector, African countries, other donor nations, and multilateral institutions, Power Africa is one of the largest pu public-private initiatives in existence and collectively is transforming the face of Africa. Uh, now we will hear from our speaker and then we'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, please share your questions in the comment section uh, for me to read as, as our, uh, uh, to our speaker. Uh, I have a few questions that have already been submitted to us in advance, uh, but please feel free to share more in the chat. Uh, we'd like to make this as interactive as possible um, as the event progresses. So we'll try to address as many of your questions uh, as we can get to, but uh, no guarantees that we'll get to all of them. Um, so uh, first, I'd like to invite uh, Power Africa Coordinator uh, Nelson um, to uh, please tell us about the Power Africa Initiative and how it works with African partners to increase energy access in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Johan. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, on today to be able to talk about this this topic. I love that video we just watched because it really does highlight the breadth of, of what Power Africa is all about. As you pointed out and as is mentioned in the video, Power Africa is a US government led initiative that is focused on reaching the goals of 30,000 megawatts and 60 million connections in Sub-Saharan Africa by the year 2030. And if we get that goal, that will constitute a doubling of access to electricity uh, over the course of about 16 years. So it's an ambitious goal. And what I like about this, though, is that it's um, this initiative is not just about uh, USAID. It's not just about State Department. There are 12 government agencies, U.S. government agencies, all working toward this, this goal including the Development Finance Corporation, our Export-Import Bank, um, our Department of Commerce, and, uh, and others. But beyond that, it also includes 22 different other development partners, like, as we refer to them, like the World Bank, like the African Development Bank, and other uh, countries that are focused on tackling this problem. And so it really is a, a broad partnership. And what we're really focused on is trying to enable the private sector to be able to succeed in investing in areas where they can make money, uh, but will result in people getting access to power who never had it before. <clears throat> and so we have companies that we're supporting. In fact, we have over 200 private sector partners that are actually connected with with Power Africa and many, many others that we have been working with over the years. In fact, just in our off-grid work that we've done over the last 10 years, we've worked with over 500 different private sector companies in that space. And what we do is, is we, we listen to them and we, we hear what their issues are in terms of their, their business plans, how, where they want to invest, where they want to... Um, uh, try to tap into a market and and then we figure out what they need and and then we try to to open up that door for them kind of help them to get through so that they can actually set up that business like a mini grid or um, you know a, an off-grid solar solution uh, like you know we saw some of the clips from the video about people who are getting access to off-grid solar products so that they could run their their small businesses. Um, that's one area where we're focused. We also have some very large private sector investors uh, and developers who are looking at grid scale investment in solar and wind, natural gas, and others that are really trying to bring large quantities of power to help support the grids that are around uh, the continent. And then of course, we also work closely with the African governments themselves and their, uh, their electrical systems, their power utilities and regulators and others to help them be able to manage their power generating and distributing assets in their countries and even regionally. So that, I mean, we've done a lot of work with the Southern Africa Power Pool, the Western Africa Power Pool to try and help facilitate power trade among the different countries so that they can, um, you know, 
countries where there's a surplus can help out the, their neighbors who have a deficit. So uh, there's really a lot of different areas that we're involved in. We leverage this partnership model to try and access the tools and resources of all the different partners to help uh, make a difference and, and to make, help these transactions get done. All right, thanks very much for um, those introductory remarks. Now, uh, let's move on to some questions. Um, so, um, uh, Coordinator Nelson, um, we are aware that you are uh, relatively new in this job um, and uh, very glad to have you um, uh, joining the effort. Um, uh, we have a question. Can you share with us your observations in your first few weeks on the job as the new Power Africa coordinator? Yeah, very much. You know, I have the, the privilege of having just come from working in Uganda. I was the USAID mission director in Uganda and had an opportunity to see the situation on the ground there where there is little access to electricity. But I, I was able to actually see a few areas where electricity was making a difference. Uh, I saw a family that had power connected and they were able to now have light in their home for studying. They had a security light outside in their compound that they felt so much safer with that security light. It was great. They had a small television where they, were, they could watch television programs. And even when there were popular uh, football matches being played, they were able to charge their neighbors to come over and watch the games. And uh, so they were able to use this electricity in, in creative ways. And it was, it was helping to elevate their standard of living. I also visited a health facility where Power Africa had helped to uh, set up some, uh, you know, a solar system around that health facility. And this was in a rural area where, where the, there was no access to the grid even possible. But with these solar panels and a battery storage system, they were able to run a pump to get water into the facility. They were able to have lighting. In fact, when I went there, they'd been, they had had continuous power for three months, 24 seven, which is unheard of. And the number of, of, of births had gone up tremendously. Uh, vaccinations had gone up. I mean, it was a real impact. And so coming to Power Africa to be the coordinator over the last you know, four weeks or five weeks uh, that I've been on the job has been, has been interesting, bringing that perspective and being able to see where uh, Power Africa is after 10 years um, where the opportunities are. There is still a lot of people out there. There are a lot of health facilities out there without access to power. And so, I mean, one of the, one of the sad statistics that we have is, you know, when we started this effort at Power Africa 10 years ago, 11 years ago, there were 600 million people without access to electricity in Sub-Saharan Africa. Well, today, despite all the work that we've done. In fact, we estimate that we've actually contributed to 200 million people getting access to power in the last 10 years. There's still 600 million people without access to power because population growth has outpaced our ability to connect people. So we need to figure out ways to accelerate the work that is happening on the continent by all partners to be able to increase that rate because as the world becomes more digital, and we're seeing innovations in AI and all these other technologies, you've got 600 million people in Africa who are completely left out. And, and that gap is going to continue to grow if we don't enable those people to get access to the digital economy and just to basic electricity very quickly. In fact, last week, it was interesting. I was at a, a US Africa business summit in Dallas and at the summit, there were at least six heads of state from Africa who were there trying to uh, encourage US companies to invest in their countries. And these are for all sectors. <clears throat> and um, I was able to participate in bilateral meetings with my interagency partners uh, with these heads of state and their delegations. <clears throat> I think I participated in about five of them, maybe six. And in every single one, electricity was one of the very most prominent topics that they talked about. In a few of them, it was about the only thing they talked about. 
And so it is on the minds of heads of state. It is on the minds of so many people around Africa that without access to power, Africa's development is going to be extremely limited. So I'm coming into this position feeling this added urgency to really, really speed up what we're doing to try and tackle this problem. All right. Thanks very much. Um, so uh, I'd like to remind uh, folks who have joined us that if you would like to ask a question of Mr. Nelson, uh, please um, uh, type your question into the comments section. That way we'll know uh, what your thoughts are and uh, we can uh, try to get to the, as many of those as we can. Um, so we did have a question um, which came into us live. Um, and that question is, what is Power Africa's approach to reforming Africa's energy sector? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, one of the heads of state that I met with last week raised this specifically. Uh, he said, we need help reforming our power sector regulations. Can you help us? And that is absolutely something that we do. We have teams that are based around the, the, the continent. In fact, we have over 50 technical professionals based all over the continent, some of them embedded with utilities, with regulators, with ministries of, of energy, <clears throat> guiding them and helping them to think through what it takes to attract investment, to be able to manage the generation and transmission and distribution resources that they have so that the power can be utilized equitably and so that they can pay for it. Um, and it's a difficult challenge in Africa. There's only maybe a small handful, maybe only one or two utilities, power utilities on the continent that are actually solvent. The rest are all being heavily subsidized. And, and that's, a, that's a problem. Um, one of the things that we did in Uganda uh, in that power sector is we actually worked closely with the ministry to help develop rural electrification plans. Um, all around the, 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 the country. And so now those plans are there, they're in place. And as uh, um, resources become available, as investors come in, now they can fit into this plan as, as part of this rollout. But it's, it's broader than that. There are, there are just so many uh, different issues. Uh, every country is unique. And so that's why we have to have this whole... Um, cadre of people, of experts that are around that can respond to those specific needs. Um, and so uh, really it gets down to the country level, but it is absolutely one of our core areas of focus to be able to work on this enabling environment to help uh, not only attract investment, but for the countries to be able to help manage those resources. All right, very good. Um, so that actually is a great segue to the next question that we got, um, which is, uh, please share with us how Power Africa is stimulating private sector investments in sub-Saharan Africa's energy sector. Speaking of investments. Yeah, uh, so again, I'll, I'll just share some recent experiences. <clears throat> Last week, we met with a number of private sector companies, companies that are looking to invest in Africa with some very innovative technologies. And one that we, we actually visited their place uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. They have a, a, uh, uh, a technology that will utilize whatever source of input power it has to create storage, long-term storage, that is augmented with hydrogen that will allow for perpetual storage like forever. Um, and so it's really, really um, interesting, but, but they're trying to figure out how to get into Africa. So we've connected them with a number of different partners. We've uh, talked about them with different, um, with government entities at this point and trying to open the door for them to be able to come. Um, there are some, you know, these conferences that focus on, on energy in Africa. And um, in fact, one of them is next week in Cape Town. And we actually have uh, helped pay along with the Department of Commerce 
for 10 U.S. companies to come over <clears throat> to actually meet with other companies, to meet with utilities, to meet with regulators, um, to get a better sense of where those opportunities are on the continent. So we, um, we, we connect them to, to other uh, companies. We connect them to financiers. We will often, we will do studies. Sometimes we can provide small amounts of funding to offset risk to sort of reduce um, their, 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 their cost of investment slightly to try and attract for the, them to come in. There's a whole suite of tools that we have that we utilize to help support the, the private sector when they're interested. So we tell anyone who's interested, just call us. If you're a company and you're interested in doing business in Africa, anywhere on the continent, call us and we'll connect you with our experts or with other partners to help you figure out what that right model is, to learn from others what they've done to really help you succeed. Thanks very much. So um, you mentioned the uh, conference that's taking place next week in Cape Town. Would that be Inlet Africa? That's right. It's Inlet. Okay. Um, maybe for the benefit of our audience, um, could you give us a little bit more information about Inlet Africa and the role it plays, uh, who will be present, um, what we can expect? Yeah, there's a few conferences like this one that are <clears throat> that are really sort of technically focused that focus on the energy sector in Africa. It's a little broader than just electricity, but it <clears throat> you, what, who you will see, you'll see utilities, government representatives and delegations from all over the continent. You'll see private sector from everywhere. You'll see <clears throat> equipment developers, you'll see um, financiers, bankers, uh, you'll see developers, um, you'll see other development partners like ourselves. So you'll see, you know, for example, you'll see um, representatives from the African Development Bank, from the World Bank, from, <clears throat> you know, I don't know the list, I haven't seen the list, but you could see someone from Sweden or from Germany or, you know, from Japan. Um, all of these countries are interested in this space. And so all of us will get together at this venue next week. And then there are some others where we also get together <clears throat> and just and collaborate and, and, and figure out how we can work together more. Um, at a lot of these, we'll actually, you know, make major announcements to new partnerships or, you know, the closure of a deal. Like at this event in Dallas, it was interesting. It was very similar to this. There was a big announcement of our <clears throat> export import bank announcing a $900 million loan to the government of uh, Angola for a solar project that um, a US company is doing that will add about 500 megawatts to their, to their uh, power system there. So that's the kind of thing that, um, that we do at, uh, at these events. They're very, very productive actually. I would encourage everyone to go if you uh, if you get a chance if you're interested in this space. A lot of journalists go too. All right, so that sounds very exciting. That's Inlet Africa, which is in Cape Town next week. Um, all right, so uh, we do have some additional um, submitted questions. Uh, so one question here, and um, I hate to ask you to put to find a point on a number, but uh, the question is, how many countries in Africa benefit from Power Africa? How yeah, that's, that's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say all of them benefit to some degree or another, but of the deals that we have worked on, that we have contributed to, in fact, I'll give you a few numbers here. Um, we've helped um, about 150, I think 152 deals reach financial close, and that's sort of where we focus. Uh, once, once a deal reaches financial close, then it's just construction and that can take a while. It's the financial close piece that is often by far the most difficult thing uh, to get everything all arranged and all, all the parties in place agreeing on all the terms. That can take years. And so we've had 152 deals that we've been able to help reach that, that point. Um, and those deals have taken place in uh, or are 
taking place in 42 different countries. So uh, our, we have quite a breadth of, um, of activity going on all over the continent. Um, we have, you know, uh, some concentration, like in Nigeria, there's a lot. In South Africa, there, there's been a lot of uh, work. Um, Kenya, some of the bigger economies you can imagine, there would be um, a lot there. But there's a lot of smaller ones. I, I, was, I met with a Burundian delegation just about three weeks ago in Washington. And there's a, a US company that's actually working to set up a private utility that will um, work closely with the government there. <clears throat> and they're actually working to uh, expand access from, I think they're around 20% <clears throat> access to about 70%. So there, there's a lot happening um, all over the continent. That's sort of the bottom line. All right. Yeah, that sounds very exciting. Um, so we have another participant who is asking, uh, are there any projects that involve or support women and girls? Yeah, actually, that, that's a good question. That has been a focus area of ours for years, um, engendering power uh, has been a focus. In fact, about probably six years ago, we actually started and run, ran a couple of cohorts of the Young Africa Leadership Initiative, YALI, that many of the listeners may be familiar with, that's been operating around the continent for a number of years that trains young professionals in, in leadership qualities. But Power Africa had a few of them dedicated to women in the power sector. And we had, I think in total, probably about 120 women from all over the continent come to these trainings. I think we did three of them. Um, and they were actually, actually able to participate and receive that, that training to be able to go back and go back to their jobs as you know, lawyers, bankers, engineers, um, uh, government officials, all in this in the power sector that is very male dominated, uh, to be able to start working their way through that glass ceiling. And there were many examples of, of, of women that were able to do that. We've also provided training programs um, around the continent for, for women to be able to get training in certain skills that would allow them to uh, to work in the sector as well. So it continues to be an area of focus of ours uh, because it is, uh, I think, an area of opportunity. Actually, um, you know, it's traditionally male dominated, yet there are many, many of these jobs that are well suited for women. All right, opportunities indeed. Um, and speaking of opportunities, uh, so we have one more question. Um, oh, can you speak to what Power Africa is doing uh, to improve access to electricity in rural parts of the continent? Rural, yeah, rural area. Yeah, there are. When you talk about the rural parts of <clears throat> of Sub-Saharan Africa you're really talking about areas where it's unlikely that the grid will extend there anytime soon. Uh, I mean, there are exceptions to that, but in general, you know, th there are places that are not going to see the grid in a generation or two. And so <clears throat> what do you do there to get access? There are a number of companies that are working on that very problem. And many of these are, uh, they're mini grid companies or they are solar home system provider, providers, uh, companies that will go in and help uh, individual homes and businesses be able to buy a solar home system that will provide enough power to run some small appliances, to charge things, to provide some lighting. Um, and they'll do these on different um, pay models so that uh, these customers can actually, in a way, buy these things on credit and pay for them over time. Uh, and, and then there are other models where a mini grid operator will come in and, and set up uh, a mini grid with one or two big anchor clients 
uh, in fact, we, we, we met with a, a company, actually two companies last week <clears throat> that are looking to connect around um, cell phone towers where they can use the, <clears throat> the telecom company to provide, you know, to pay for the power that will be provided to that, that cell tower, but then they'll be producing excess power and they can actually run lines to the people in that surrounding area to be able to help um, get them access to electricity from this uh, independent unit. Um, and then they'll be able to pay for that electricity in smaller amounts, it won't be anything compared to what the telecom company is paying, but they'll be getting access to power and be able to pay for it. I mean, one of the important principles is, you know, people, even in these rural areas, the people who are subsistence farmers, like they, they do have small amounts of money that they pay for energy, right? They're, they're paying for charcoal. Uh, they're paying for um, small amounts of energy to, to, to live their lives. <clears throat> and so if we can, if these companies can find solutions that can help them with cooking or to help them with uh, running a small business, uh, you know, a sewing machine or a refrigerator or a small mill or something like that, these people are willing to pay. They will pay. Um, it's finding that right balance, um, and, and we want them to pay. You know, we, we don't want to create a situation where we're giving people power for free, right? People need to be able to have this sense of, of they're their purchasing something of value, and, and they're paying for it, um, and even if it's just a small amount. And there are lots of companies experimenting with this. Like I said, lots of different models to figure this out. It's just extra challenging because you have in these communities, very, very low capacity to pay. There's just not a lot of money, but there is little. And so that's what they're trying to build these models around. Yeah, there's quite a few companies exploring this space. Well, that uh, does indeed sound like a very creative set of solutions. So that's exciting to hear about that. Um, so I think we have time uh, maybe for just one last question. Uh, and we did have a question about what is Power Africa doing uh, to prioritize renewable energy projects. You mentioned solar um, out in the countryside. Um, you know, is there anything else that you're doing to prioritize renewable energy? Yeah. <clears throat> so what's interesting is Power Africa is really established or founded on the Electrify Africa Act in the U.S., which Congress passed as a law um, that basically says that we will exist and that we will work on this problem. But one of the requirements is that we are an all of the above initiative, which means that we will work on um, all different types of power, um, all different sources of power in order to reach the goals of um, gaining access. So what we do is we follow the demand signals from the private sector, the demand signals from governments in terms of their planning uh, to be able to to do our work. And right now, most of the demand signals we're getting are for renewable, uh, renewable work, uh, renewable sources of energy, uh, both off-grid and on-grid. Like I, I told you about this, this big project in Angola that we just announced last week. It's 500 megawatts of solar that's going to go on the grid. And so you got that, and then you got the solar home system provider that is, you know, a few kilowatts that, but is still providing what this individual family needs. So, so we're really following those demand signals, providing a lot of support across the board on all types of renewables. We've done geothermal um, plants up in Ethiopia and Kenya. Uh, we've done hydro and small hydro. Uh, wind projects, wind projects in Senegal and in Kenya, um, and of course, solar across the board. Um, so we've done a lot of different things. And again, it's because in many cases, these are the cheapest forms of access to electricity. I mean, the, the cost has fallen dramatically uh, over the last number of years, making renewable power uh, cheaper than all other forms. And so that's what's causing this, this demand. And it's really been interesting. 
All right. Well, um, thank you very much. Uh, um, Coordinator Nelson, you've been uh, very generous with your time. Uh, and uh, we know that you have a lot of other uh, things you need to get to. Um, so that will be our, our final question uh, for today. Um, but I uh, did want to ask if um, you have any final thoughts to share with our audience today. Thank you. Yeah, one other point that I'll make that <clears throat> is important about our approach is that, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't have enough money to solve this problem um, uh, as a U.S. government um, or any government. Like, we're not going to be able to solve this problem. It's going to be leveraging the private sector and their investments. And so that's one of the things that we focus on is taking our funding that we have and using it in ways that are as strategic as possible to be able to unlock more potential for investment. And so, for example, these 152 deals that, that we've worked on so far that have gotten to financial close, you know, we've contributed X amount. I can't remember how much exactly into those, those deals, but those deals are worth $26 billion. And so, and I can tell you, we did not put $26 billion. Um, that is not our money. Um, we put in some, uh, several hundred million um, uh, has gone into these, but that's the leverage that, that we're getting. If we can help $26 billion worth of power projects get on the ground and start working with our contribution, that's, that's very worth it. And those companies that are making these investments, they're extremely grateful for that little bit of extra uh, help that we're providing to help get these deals done. So that's really the model. And it's, it's, it's amazing when it works well. And that's what we're trying to do. So thanks, Johan. All right. Well, no, thank you. And that's all um, um, very inspiring. And, um, you know, it gives us all a lot of hope, I think. Um, and I uh, really appreciate the, the efforts and the creativity and everything that goes into this. So um, thank you very much, uh, Power Africa Coordinator Richard Nelson, uh, once again, for being with us today and for uh, being so generous with your time. And I want to thank everybody else who joined us today on this Facebook Live event. Um, it's always a lot of fun to get together and to hear from people around the continent to um, get an idea of what they're uh, thinking and uh, and give them a chance to uh, pose some questions to us, um, whether they be challenging questions or, uh, you know, some we can just bat right back. Um, but anyway, um, this is always a great opportunity and I appreciate it very much. Um, so. Um, a, we will be making a recording of this event available, uh, and it will be posted later on the feed. Um, and uh, for everybody who's online with us today, or for anyone you know, we would like to invite you to follow us on Twitter, um, that is X, uh, at, at Africa Media uh, Hub. That's at Africa Media Hub, that's our handle. Um, and also please stay, stay in touch with us by email at afmediahub at state.gov. Um, so that brings us to a close today. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, so long and be well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Johan. <laughs>